And now our guest today is best known for being a pop and soap sensation with catchy songs and gripping storylines on Hollyoaks and, of course, in Coronation Street. Um, but now Adam Rickett is here alongside his wife, Good Morning Britain correspondent Katie Rickett, to speak to us exclusively about their own real-life experience of something that probably isn't spoken about enough, and that is male infertility. Hi there, Katie. Hi there, Adam. Hi. How are you? Very well. Very good. But listen, before we talk about that, uh, yours is some love story, isn't it? I mean, it was love at first sight for <laughs> both of you, Adam. Well, for me. No. Uh, Here we go. So basically, <laughs> um, we were, I was doing some charity work for the RSTCA, and um, it was like a big launch for a campaign, and then there was suddenly there were two reporters to interviewing. And on the day, uh, at the time, Katie was working for ITV Central, and she came to interview me. And what should have been a 30-minute interview turned into five and a half hours. And I literally rang my mum that day and said, I've got, met the girl I'm going to marry. The reason he says it was for me, not for her, it actually was for me as well. But I, because he told me straight away pretty much, I love you, and then introduced me to his mum within a week without telling oh, me about it. I almost sort of slightly panicked and thought, is he just saying this? Is this what he's like? It's yes, I'm a blue. player. I <laughs> use my mum for all the girls I sleep with in my life. Within, within sort of three weeks, it was. I it became completely apparent to me that he really meant everything he said. And um, basically, our first date, we sat in um, a cafe. And I've never known anything like it because I remember looking at the clock thinking, and we must have been here an hour. We'd been there five hours. Yeah. And it just felt like the whole world stopped. Um, and, yeah. It's a great way to have it, a really. date. You start with one meal and you have another meal while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> you start to ask for bog off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's such a lovely story to hear. I mean, obviously, your relationship went really, really quickly. So, I mean, I've got yeah. to take you to the point that, that you want to come and talk about is when the two of you, you know, had to think about family and, and Adam you had reservations about that hadn't you yeah I mean it's it's I kind of always I don't know why but I always kind of thought I was going to have fertility problems I just as a kid for some reason you know when you picture yourself when you're older I never pictured myself with children and I could I could never explain to you why but then I was at the age of 22 I was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis which is an autoimmune disorder it manifests its way itself in different ways which I've been on chatting about on the show but one of them is it can affect male fertility. Um, so, you know, Katie comes from North Yorkshire, a very big family orientated family. So when we did get back together, you know, I did say to her very early on, look, I'm not sure what my fertility is going to be like. Um, and then when it came to the point that we were going to get engaged, I sort of said, look, I'm going to get tested because it's good for us to know, you know, what the, the game plan is moving forward. Um, so I went down to London and went to see a very nice chap, um, did my business, um, came back in to meet him and he said, uh, Mr. Rickett, you normally have 100 million sperm in your ejaculation. You have three. I went, three million? That's not bad. <laughs> went, no, you have three. And they're swimming in circles. Um, and basically it was explained to me that it was because not only of the ankylosing spondylitis, but also because of the autoimmune suppressants I have to take because of that. I basically just yeah, had zero fertility. Um, which was scary because I said, I knew Katie came from a very family orientated sort of background. And to say to somebody, look, I'm not sure we're going to be able to have children was really nerve wracking at the time. But I kind of, the way I looked at it was if it had been Katie who couldn't have kids, I would never for one second have thought I'm not going to be with you for the rest of my life. So I, you know, although it was a bit nerve wracking that she was going to be disappointed, I was never worried about her leaving me or anything. I was just worried that I was going to be denying her something. Yeah. Which you're not. Mm. Um, how how did think, it feel for you, Katie? Um, to be honest, it. I mean, I've said before I didn't bat an eyelid, and I kind of mean that. From the, I do mean that from the bottom of my heart. To me, I married Adam, and everything that comes thereafter is a bonus. So if Adam can't have children, we can't have children, and that is just the way it is. So when he told me, A, he kind of teed it up a bit anyway, um, but but B, it was just like, okay, so what do you want to do instead? So that is kind of where we've based our, our life now is, you know, the only thing we want to do is things together. So we looked at what other things we can do together to, you know, grow, like we have the dogs, and um, we have a business together. So I, I didn't really bat an eyelid. It was just, I love him. And what happens thereafter happens thereafter. I want to ask Adam how it affected you mentally because infertility in men is not discussed very much and certainly you can't imagine men discussing it with other men. So ap apart from telling Katie, who did you tell? Did you tell any of your male friends? 
Um, I did, yeah. I mean, I think it's it's kind of similar to you know back in the in the dark ages and the middle ages when a woman was barren, they were kind of almost ostracised from society, and, and you know it was never going to be ostracised from society the fact they had no swimmers. But at the same time, you know, it was that whole thing where you were worried about being slightly mocked because yes. of it. You know, seen as being less manly because of it. Um, but in truth, I just kind of there was my attitude was there is literally nothing I can do about it. You know, this is who I am and. And, you know, my fertility doesn't measure me as a person and certainly doesn't measure me as a man. Um, and when I did talk to people about it, because I wasn't ashamed or embarrassed of it. Maybe I wasn't first, to be fair. Um, but then when I did, everybody was actually really good about it. You know, everyone's got like, you lucky thing. <laughs> and also, you know, now, the amount of people I meet now, especially since I'm getting older now. Um, also... You know, people who, when I was young, were thinking about kids who are now my age trying to have kids are finding that they've got difficulty as well. Um, so it is, you know, it's... It is a lot bigger problem than I think people realise. And you you also went for the test on your own. How difficult was that? And then you had to tell your family afterwards okay. as well. You have to do it on your own, otherwise it would be rude. <laughs> um... No, but I mean, you could have had support going. Well, uh, yeah. No, I know. Sorry. <laughs> um, it, no, sorry. Uh, no, it's it was it was a bit nerve wracking. Um, I mean, because you know, the weirdest thing is that you're literally put in this little room, and you know, it's like something out of a the movie. There's just this box of material which you're meant to use if you need. Move on. It. Um, it's 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 just a very very bizarre experience. Um, but at the same time, it was kind of like I, I knew why I was doing it. You know, I'm, in truth, I wasn't even doing it for me because my attitude about whether I could or haven't couldn't have children it was more a question of you know even if I was fertile did I or didn't I want children um it was what the only thing that was making me nervous was the fact that it was you know what impact did that have on Katie and any dream she might have so what what is life for you two then I mean I know you've got really busy busy lives and I know the dogs are a big part of your your life your fur babies yes uh, yeah I mean we're very lucky I mean you know we have an opportunity you know, it, it's I, I have the utmost respect and, you know, adoration for people who can have children and that's, you know, kind of what they want to do with their lives. I mean, we're in a position where we can't, but we've not let it impact our life in any negative way. I mean, whereas there are parts of life we will miss out on, you know, we're not, we're not naive. There are things we are going to miss out on. So we kind of took the opposite view. We kind of had the attitude of, well, let's try and experience things that maybe other people won't be able to if they have families and those responsibilities. So... It's great. I mean, you know, there's the careers, which I know we're, you know, it sounds like a flippant thing to say, but we both do really, you know, I love acting, Katie loves being the presenting and the journalism, but it's more the things we get to do outside of that. You know, the fact that we do manage to have a business together, we have the dogs, so we never feel like we're lacking in the fact that we can't give our love to something else. Mm. And then, you know, I know some viewers will sort of watch and go, oh, well, dogs aren't children. Well, to us, they are. Let me just tell you now, <laughs> <laughs> they are three of the dogs, dogs who take the most amount of looking after. They're the most gorgeous, gorgeous little beings in the world. And, and, and you know, yeah. we, we love them from the bottom of our hearts. And, and I think... What, you know, when we had this conversation about having kids, you know, we could have tried the IVF route and that sort of thing. And I think it made us really sit down and we knew it would be um, a difficult process. It would be an unlikely process mm. because of um, the position we were in. And we just sort of said, I remember sitting around the kitchen table and just saying, do you want to go through this or should we just make use of the other things we can do and, and and we decided to do that instead and you know we do have a business together we're very busy like Adam said we both love our careers as well um, and it means that we can go for certain things that we wouldn't be able to perhaps if we had um, you know to move the babies between yeah. us and um, I, I also think I mean I kind of joking said it to Katie as well as you know I, I genuinely don't think I had enough space in my heart for anything else other than uh, so you know I, I, I just don't know if actually you know I don't feel like I've, our relationship has lacked anything from not having children. Um, you know, if, if anything, there's things we've been able to experience which we might not have been able to experience otherwise. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Linda and I, who've been with our partners for 100 years, are looking at you two thinking, <laughs> oh, if only, if only. You're a great couple. Um, Adam and Katie, thanks so much. It's really lovely to speak to you today. Thanks. Uh, Bye. 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 And if you've been affected by anything we spoke about with Adam and Katie, please head to the website.